Hello and welcome to the Lincolnshire Buzzcast, a podcast where we take a real life humorous look at life in Lincolnshire, as well as interview some amazing people who are doing some fantastic things in the county. I'm Lizzie. I'm Donny. And I'm Hannah. So this week's episode is all about history. Um, We've got a fantastic interview later on with Charlotte from Heritage Lincolnshire and also Charles, who is our aviation expert. Um, But before then, to continue on this topic, we uh, would like to talk to you about things that we'd like to bring back. So things from the past that were so good that actually we would like it if it existed now. So Hannah, what would you you like to bring back? Oh, you throw me in there. Um... See, I, I can't decide. There's just so much good stuff in there that you'd want to bring back. But then there's so much good stuff from from the 80s and 90s. I mean, I love 80s music. I'd love to bring some 80s music back. I'd love to bring back some old school um, 80s and 90s TV. I love Baywatch. I really love Baywatch as a show. I'd love to bring Baywatch back. Uh, just just for it's a good binge watch, isn't it? So I don't know. There's just so much good stuff. I mean, I wouldn't bring back Double Denim. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's my answer. Gone. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, what would you bring back? Double Denim, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, one, might, one might argue that I've already brought it back. So. Yeah, not very well, not very successfully. No, I've still brought it back, though, haven't I? Um, so, so double denim, obviously. Apparently, um, for me, like I'd, I'd look like I love old school football boots and old school football <gasps> kits. Um, I think they just, you know, other than the short shorts, I think um, the simplicity, to some of the designs, and and just some mm. of the memories that are attached to them, I think they, I think they're great. I'm a massive fan of vinyls. Like, I love vinyl. Um, yes. So, like, I've got. You know, I've got, I've got between twenty and thirty now, um, and the uh, like is growing. Yeah, across the road from me, there was this, there was this um, couple who were selling um, some old uh, vinyls, but like some originals. And um, I just sat there for a good couple of hours. It was, it was sometime last year, just like pouring through them and, uh, and 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 going through that. So yeah, I think I think that the other thing I'd bring back is a time where we didn't have mobile phones. I think. <laughs> because yeah. it just sounds a lot more it sounds like in many ways communication were, was was better and actually that in this interconnected world where mm. we're always available it can actually just be really tiresome and just annoying a lot of the time I've got mm. a very similar one to you because it's on that note then I'd like to bring back letters because um, yes. actually for me um being the old hat romantic that I am, I just love that time when people used to just write to each other and it was lovely and you'd have like that, you know, little roundup and you'd have a little pen pal and that kind of thing. Email, I, I, you know, I work in media, like I'm, I, I'm marketing. So obviously it, the the digital age is, is, is something I work in all the time, but I think it is a drain as well. It is a big drain. And mm-hmm. we've spoken before, obviously, about how communication we think for our youngsters has been damage but you know for everyone I, I'd agree with that I'd quite like to I love my phone I am genuinely addicted to it and I don't mind saying too badly addicted to it and I wish I wasn't but I am um so I think for me I'd like that I'd like that letter back the romance of the letters I love that you know back in the back in the day when men used to ride up on horses and send you a letter in the mail and all that kind of thing is lovely I have that worry as a as a mother of a teenage daughter that you um used to Back back when I was a kid, if a if a bloke uh, from school wanted to talk to me, they'd have to ring the home phone and get past the parents first, um, which was a which was a pe- <laughs> yes. passage as it is. I I remember uh, ringing the boy I fancied on the home phone and being like, "Hi, can I speak to?" I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> uh, and, and he'd been really like, "I'd have to pull up the courage." But nowadays, boys could be messaging my daughter left, right, and centre, and I've got no idea about it because they just need a telephone number. Like, so I think. Um, you know, yeah. gone are the days where we we had that. You know, and I think romance has taken a bit of a bit of a toll from that. You know, from the likes of Snapchat and all that kind of stuff for flirting. Let's bring back some actual actual letters yeah. and and start using the written word a little bit better rather than slang text and stationery. We would need more stationery if we brought we back letters. Stationery, yeah, nice little quill. <laughs> and I was thinking about the practical side of it. <laughs> I love stationery. 
Do we have enough stationery for this, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Can we don't. You never have. How dare you? Yes. How dare you say that, Danny? You never have enough stationery. <laughs> I think that links into the other question, which uh, is something me and Hannah have talked about quite a bit. Like, if you could go back into any time period and live there, where would you live? Obviously, oh. there is some caveats here. So, like, you could go back really far back and be in Victorian or even before then. But obviously. You've got with that, you know, all the diseases and stuff that was in there at the time. There's not, you know, sewerage systems and all that, kind of, you know. So you won't be going back to live with the modern day comforts that you've got. You don't actually have to live in that time period. Um, so that thing, I think. Equality, equality also wasn't going on then, was it? Yeah. Equality, yeah, was just not there. Um, so there, there is, you'd have to live in that time period. So I guess it's a tricky question in a way, because obviously I'd love to live back in the Regency area where we wore all these nice yeah. gowns and, and that kind of thing, even though there was that pressure, but without the pressure of how you have to marry and you have to do this and this is sort of your life, but it would be nice to see the, yeah. the romance of that era too. So, but that's not the, the era I'd pick because, of it. Yeah, that's not the era I'd pick because of inequality for women. I just couldn't. I couldn't mm. live in that time, knowing what I know now, no. and I think I'd probably no. not do well in that time. So, oh, um, so this is a question. Then this is a question, Lizzie. So, if you went back to that time, would you still have the mentality of yourself, or would you have the mentality of a lady from that time? Because if you had a mentality of a lady from that time, you wouldn't know any different. That is true. Oh, wow. um, good question. I think you've got to. Get, I think <laughs> for the purpose of this question. You've got, I'd like to think if I went back, I'd still be, you know, a bit of a renegade and I'd still want to do that. But actually, you don't know because you're raised in that, aren't you? You're raised to think mm. in that way. You're raised to think that this is the only aspiration you have mm. and there are no other people around you. So I'd like to think that I'd still have those thoughts and ideas, but I probably wouldn't. So I think for the purpose of this question, when you're going back in time, you're going back with all the knowledge you have now. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, well, I'm a, I, I like I like history, and I'm convinced. So this was an interview question once that um, if you'd had a past life, what were you in a past life? And I a hundred like you know where most people would go. Oh, I'm not sure. That's a good question, and they'd be buying time to answer it. I just dove straight in. I was like, well, boom, one hundred percent. I was an Egyptian pharaoh's cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What have you had in your breakfast this morning? I want to know. I want my like itinerary of what you've been eating. Is that the time period you'd go back to then? Yeah. Is that the time period you'd go back to? You'd be an Egyptian l- cat. I, w- I don't want to be an Egyptian <laughs> cat. <laughs> but I, like, <laughs> can you imagine a cat with my memories? <laughs> Just trying to play just basketball like, as just a Just like cat. meow. <laughs> <laughs> meowing. Meowing with a Yorkshire accent. Whatever that sounds like. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs are looking at me like, what on earth is <laughs> An Egyptian cat going, meow, they up there, meow. <laughs> I sounded scout then. <laughs> I didn't think that. I was like, oh, she forgot Yorkshire. She's from Yorkshire. I don't know. But yeah, I think I would... No, I wouldn't be a cat. I wouldn't yeah, be a me. cat. I, de- <laughs> I definitely yeah, wouldn't. Me. I don't think I'd... I wouldn't be a cat. I would want to be like Nefertiti or something like that or Cleopatra and I would want to be the, the queen... Oh, so Fair you're not only going back in time, you're going back as a as a queen. Yes. <laughs> well, well, if you're going to do it. Tell you what, no, Hannah has transformed your question, hasn't she? <laughs> she has. She's got I'm going to be all powerful, I'm going to be Cleopatra, and I'm just going to rub away. Well, it's okay, Danny. You could be the cat on my knee. Well, wow. moving swiftly on. <laughs> what time period would you go back to? Um... <laughs> Yeah, diff- uh, difficult one. I love the idea of being in the 60s for music. Um, mm. Actually, all of these are for music. I love the idea of being in the 80s for music, but also for yes. film. Um, massive Star Wars fan. Um, gaming and and, and also yeah. like fashion and, and stuff like that. Then the 90s, I love 90s music. Like, Oasis is my favourite band. I just love the idea, like the, the time in the 90s. I'm probably going to say definitively the 60s because I think the movement, I think there was a mm. massive movement in terms of... Um, freedom of expression and and so many creative things came out of that particular decade um and when yes. i listen to my grandparents tell stories um they they always seem like the best stories 
Um, so yeah, probably the sixties for me. What about you, Lizzie? <laughs> I knew I should have gone before you because I was picking I was picking the 60s. So that's really annoying. I was I was torn in between 40s and 60s because 40s I like that whole post-war community spirit that people mm. had in terms of the fact and um, when I watched Call the Midwife, I love that. I just love seeing that community spirit and stuff they had around that that era time of of just looking out for each other and you know you knew who your neighbor was and all that kind of thing. However, they still do have a, a degree of inequality and mm. stuff in that time and you know things you know in terms of so, recovering from the war there was a lot of poverty and stuff around so I then had changed it to the 60s but now it looks like I'm copying you <laughs> but yeah for the exact same reason the creativity <laughs> the um obviously for, for for women there was the invention of the pill so that gave a little bit more control and stuff for the women in terms of that equality look and and feel and things like that so I think for me it would be lovely to see the 60s although 80s, 90s, all, they're all good. They're all good, aren't they, really? Let's be honest. But I've seen the 90s, so I'd quite like to see 60s. Could I give a specific date? A specific? Are I've you still being a, a good queen? One. So, Cleopatra. I'm, no, I'm not being a queen. I would like to be a general passerby on July the 20th, 1969, when Buzz Aldrin and Neil yeah, Armstrong yeah. walked on the moon. Yeah! Wouldn't it be amazing so to see that? Can you imagine seeing that in sixty? Did you just do a cowboy news? Did yeah! You just do a cowboy yeah. News? <laughs> so we're all going back to the sixties, are we? We just need to build this time machine then, and we all talk about yeah. together. Then. Yeah, let's do that. Is it, is it one of the is it one of the Austin Powers films where he goes back to the sixties? Is it one of them? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. That would be, be class, wouldn't it? It'd be so good. Yeah, that would be so good. What would you wear in the sixties? It'd be oh, oh it'd just be just be so many things that would just be something bright and bold. Yeah, yeah bright, I, bold, I, I, kitten heels, the... some flowers in my hair. Yeah. I have I have the Beatles, um, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, um, a canvas print on my wall. And they are wearing the most rascal like yes. suits um in it that just look so cool. And I think it'd be so cool to I think it'd be amazing to live in London in the sixties. When my grandparents yes. look like London oh, in the sixties, yeah, it just sounds yeah. insane. And all the markets and stuff, Portobello Road and stuff. Oh, man, yes, yes. But still, moon landing. I would want to watch the moon landing. (laughs) (laughs) What, live there? Yeah. Well, they had it on in TVs all over, didn't they? Yeah. If you could jump about time, there are lots of things in history I'd like to go back and just find out. Like, I'd, yeah. re- I'd like to find out what happened to the, the princes in the tower. That's a massive thing I'd like to find mm-hmm. out. If I could just pop back to history, jump in the tower, find out Who? if Richard III did kill the, the two princes or yeah. not. No idea. <laughs> go back and look at your history, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't, I you, know, you know what was interesting what you said earlier on, Lizzie, when you spoke about, um, you know, I think Hannah asked the question, would we come back in time with our own memories? You spoke about how you thought you might be different back then obviously for, for me and Hannah who have to teach about nature versus nurture and yeah. this idea that you know are you um you know based on your genetics always predisposed to be the person that you are um or you know is it based upon sort of your socio-cultural upbringing and all that kind of mm. stuff or the playoff between the two I thought that was quite important I, I, or quite interesting I think that you would probably still be similar maybe not exactly the same but still be a really similar person to the person that you are now but you know still a bit of a a bit of a renegade (laughs) i'd like to think so that i'd have still have that creative speed streak and want to go do different things but i mean i think nurture does play a huge part into it because i think as a as a you know parent that you know your parents teach you right from wrong like most of the time and and I know I know often you you can go I disagree with my parents quite a bit but a lot of the stuff were quite similar on but that's because they taught me that so they taught me what was right and what was wrong and 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 allowed gave me the freedom to look at it myself and stuff like that but you you get that from them so if if you know you're growing up in an environment where your mother and your grandparent and everyone around there has done that thing like say the rigid series where you go up you'll be presented you you know you your aim is to marry well and that's the point of your existence almost for women it was that you grow up thinking that is that's the point like until someone actually shines a light on is that okay like that's it's just the norm isn't it I'm sure there's a lot of this probably a lot of stuff that we do now that's the norm that throw in about 40 50 years time that someone's gonna go I can't believe that you thought that was okay um but if until that's shined a light on you don't know I always laugh when I do watch things like call the midwife where they've got things where the doctor's smoking over the patients and stuff like that that we look at it now thinking (laughs) that's so awful 
like that's so alien but actually at the time <laughs> they didn't know that that was wrong like they didn't know there was any bad yeah. health evidence so it does well, no the smoking point, actually, was supposedly is, good yeah which does rest the point what do you think now that we are doing now in this modern day that in about 20 30 years time they're going to look back and be like <sighs> what why did you do that <laughs> I would like I would like to think that um, it would be things like the gender pay gap. Yeah. I would like to think that it would be things, um, yeah. Like I know that's slightly political, but it, that's a political thing across the globe. That's a global thing. That's not a um, yeah. you know. There's, there's no political affiliation there or anything like that. Um, so I, I would like to think something like that. Um, I, I think it could be back what you said in terms of the fact that the, how invested we are in our phones as well like in terms of yeah. if you just think of the world around you that you're missing like maybe they're going to go back I mean it wouldn't make a very good TV programme just to watch a bunch of people in our modern day era not talk to each other and sit on the phones <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not quite sure they'll make a film about that in terms, unless it's going to go, uh, you know, even worse. Um, but yeah, it's you know, I'd like to think that in the future we've found a better balance between technology and living. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that we've got to at some point know our limits, especially not to stop us progressing because I think we need to continue to be progressive. Um, whether that's technology, science, whatever the arts that we're progressive in. But I do think that at some point we have to just stop and go, uh, we need to rewind, we need to re-engage with nature, we need to just open our eyes and stop looking at our phones 24 hours a day. We need to stop putting the pressure on ourselves to answer emails at 9, 10 o'clock at night and things like that. You know, and that that's not coming from a, an establishment point of view. That's genuinely coming from, I think there'll be a lot of people listening that will go, yeah, I, I think I do tend to put pressure on myself, even though my, my business don't tell me to answer my emails at nine, 10 o'clock at night. I think we do need to take a step back and we have to think about socially and mentally what it's doing to us to just be engaged in, in technology all the time. Um, yeah. And what is it doing to us as humans? We're, we're just becoming a technological race rather than actual fleshy humans with feelings. <laughs> I think it's time we brought in the experts in this condition in this conversation, don't you think? Yes. History. Yeah. Let's uh, let's bring in Charlotte. Right, okay, so we've got Charlotte Davey from Heritage Lincolnshire with us today and she is the project officer and site manager. She's going to be talking to us about all things Lincolnshire and history and archaeology based, I suppose. <laughs> That's about right. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all. Okay, so we'll kick off with sort of the first question, I suppose, which is um, what do you think is the best thing about Lincolnshire, either the sites that you work at or some of the events and things that you've got going on, or just generally, what, what do you like? like about Lincolnshire? Oh, I was going to say, it's very difficult to pin it down into one thing. I think there is phenomenal... He ph yes, sorry. <laughs> this isn't going well. There's phenomenal <laughs> history um, in Lincolnshire, but I think what makes Lincolnshire Lincolnshire is the fact that it has such a unique culture. Um, obviously, it's a really interesting county. It's, it's quite... It's a, a big combination between suburban areas like Lincoln that's got the very old city um, and sort of a lot of sort of buildings um, and then you've also got this sort of rural backdrop um, and you've got this amazing sort of difference in the landscape as well so um, I think what's brilliant about Lincolnshire is as a county it's beautiful as you've got sort of the um, the rolling hills of the world um you've got the wonderful wonderful fens so which have all their sort of amazing animals um and then you've got this sort of agricultural and sort of uh, natural sort of sort of very f flat um field land um which I, I don't think there's really anywhere else in the country that's like lincolnshire and it creates a very special type of person as well so i, I find that people from lincolnshire um are full of personality you know that they've got that very much the yellow belly um, um, sort of approach to things so very hardy so I think it's just wonderful and as I say obviously I, I'm a bit biased that I love the history of it I love that so many things have happened in Lincolnshire I love that we've got amazing buildings wherever you look um, the churches in Lincolnshire are fantastic um, you know you're, you're 
you only have to sort of drive about sort of 20 miles away from Lincoln, you can still see the, the cathedral um, uh, rising up over the skyline. So I'm, I'm rambling on a bit because it's just, it's very difficult to pin down. But I think what I love about Lincolnshire is that within within the UK, it is absolutely unique, isn't it? That it's got these, it is such a patchwork um, in terms of its landscape and its people um, and its history. So yes, <laughs> Long, long answer for a fairly simple question. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I really, really liked that answer until you started praising Lincolnshire folk because I'm a Yorkshire lass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yorkshire oh, yeah. people, Yorkshire people. Let's just give some praise to the Yorkshire folk as well. <laughs> no, no, this we'll, is cut, the- <laughs> we'll cut that out because this is the Lincolnshire buzzcast. I, Charlotte, I actually um, listening to that. Um, I don't think I've heard anyone sort of describe Lincolnshire as a whole like that before in my entire life and I've been you know I've lived in Lincoln for a long time across different parts of my life and um yeah it made me sort of like wow like we really do have a lot to be um proud of and interested in and there's so much that you don't appreciate necessarily until somebody says something like that so thank you well, I think I can kind of say it because I have to confess I am not a native um, yellow belly. So um, I'm I'm actually so I'm a black country girl. So I was I was sort of raised in Warsaw. So I'm a I'm a sort of borderline brummy sort of proper black country yam yam. So um, it takes me a long time to lose my accent. But I think um, you know we, we were saying about uh, Lizzie, you've been from uh, Anna, you've been from Yorkshire, um, and that whole thing of sometimes it takes somebody coming in from outside of the county to recognize um what's really special about it because if you live here all your life um i think you maybe don't always get the, the opportunity to appreciate how special it is yeah definitely like well we've, we've moved here because um well well we just wanted a break from city life we, we did live at city in in yorkshire and stuff I mean, yorkshire's got some lovely countryside and stuff but um yeah mum and dad Stop moved talking out here about yorkshire tired. And but no, I love Yorkshire, but I oh, love Yorkshire's Lincolnshire lovely. even more. We love Yorkshire. You've managed to speak how great Yorkshire is in twice in the open. But I was going to go on to say that we we've obviously chosen Lincolnshire and moved to Lincolnshire, and it's brilliant for. I'm not going to say it, but wing the dogs because if I if I do say that word, they are going to jump up and run around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it is brilliant like and I think yeah having those different things on your doorstep is fantastic isn't it that you can just drive 20 minutes and you're somewhere completely different it's brilliant and brilliant yeah love it I think that leads me into to my question a little bit because I have lived in Lincolnshire always uh, my entire life different parts of Lincolnshire but Lincolnshire definitely so I'm well and truly a Lincolnshire yellow belly um but um, as part of something that me and my, my husband have vowed to do with the children is we wanted to, to do more camping holidays and, and, and see England properly and actually take the kids to see some really cool historical sites and, and like have some learning and walking and, and actually get them to, to know more about about England, I guess, as a whole. But, you know, before we even venture out, um, what what I want to know is is what what are the amazing places in Lincolnshire? Because actually, you are right. So for someone who's lived here always, I I might not necessarily um, know some of the hidden gems that actually are right on my doorstep that I've got no idea about. So um, for someone like me, I guess with with a family, I've got a I've got a five year old and a thirteen year old. What are some hidden gem epic sites that I absolutely need to make sure that I take my family to before I venture out? Ooh. That's a tricky one. Now, I'm a little bit biased because obviously I'm a very dislikish. So my favourite sites are always going to be the sites I look after. So I'd say um, for the little ones, my my all-time favourite for the history and also just because it's beautiful is Bolingbroke Castle which is um, not far from Spilsby. It's over in Old Bolingbroke. Um, it's free to access. Um, it's an English heritage site, but we, we actually look after it. But um, it's an amazing space. Um, it, it's huge and it's got such history to it. And, you know, where else are you going to go in Lincolnshire where you can actually stand um, in the area where a king was born? So because it's the birthplace of Henry the Fourth. 
So um, wow. there's a lot of history there. And it's just wonderful. It's got a moat. It's got lovely um, – in terms of if you, if you even just go for the nature, so if you're not even a big history person, but, you know, you like having a run around, having a scramble – um it's it's absolutely phenomenal so um you can have a picnic and all sorts and just enjoy it there's some beautiful views over the fields as well um there's a sort of raised up area um called the auditor's tower where you can um basically stand and, and look out over the route yard um and look out over old bolingbrook so and that's great because kids kids enjoy it because you can have a really good run around you know um there are occasionally ducks and more hens and things in the in the um moat that you can see and, and things like that i think my my other one is more of a hidden gem um so because unfortunately it, it is another one of our sites oh, we've got an exclusive here folks <laughs> so, uh, it is what it is another one of our sites but we only open it once a year for heritage open days we did manage to open it last year as well in the pandemic which is great and we're hoping to do so this year um but we are um we have a fantastic site called the um Whole Beach Royal Observer Corps post, which is an underground nuclear bunker, which most people don't know we have, though um, for the, the history of wow. the Cold War, um, wow. many people, yeah, exactly. So many people have, uh, it's, it's within every five miles, there used to be one of these posts all across the country. So because they used to monitor for originally in, in sort of the Second World War, it was monitoring for air attacks. Um, but then they reutilized it for the Cold War. So and they used it for monitoring nuclear attacks and they built it underground. Um, and it's it, it's brilliant. And there's not many of them left now across the UK. A lot of them are private. So people keep them as their own private bunkers. Some of them are just completely dilapidated because <laughs> they're in the middle of the fields. Um, but we've tried our best to restore it. And we, we have a wonderful volunteer who helps us with that. So if you come to us on our, on our Heritage Open Day uh, in September, uh, we can take you down the bunker and you can see what it was like. So um, it, it's quite a – you can't be afraid yes. of ladders. It's, it is quite a long ladder getting down there. Uh, you have to wear a, a, a hard hat and you have to sign sign something to say that you're physically <laughs> fit to get down there. Yeah. Um, Lizzie's Liz scared up. of heights and that is not happening. But I'll go for you, Lizzie, and I'll tell you what it's like. <laughs> it's kids for me. <laughs> So, and there's some brilliant ones. If if you like um, if you like your buildings as well, I think one of my favourites. It, it's not ours, this one, which is nice. So I'm not being too biased this time. Is um, <laughs> if you're if you're over Boston Way, it wouldn't really be a trip to Boston if you didn't pop in and, and have a look at the stump. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah which is uh, some bottles. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And they've got a wonderful cafe and they've often got a Lego exhibition as well. So <laughs> everyone yeah. loves Lego. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, Matt, you are planning my summer for me. <laughs> you've, uh, you've given a good, good Lincolnshire range, but is there anything? So I'm, I'm North Lincolnshire based. Is there anything sort of? In, for my Lizzie's gang? thinking, can I save? <laughs> can I save a commute? Can I? Can I just? Is there something on my doorstep? I want to. I want to see if there's something for my gang as well. <laughs> there is in, Ooh, in I mean, Boston, the storm. That's like an hour away. I mean, which yeah. is what I'm fine to travel to, but uh, I'm just trying to cover all of Lincolnshire. <laughs> Do you know, there's absolute, there's loads in the north um, that I can think of. Obviously, there's a lot of history around. Um, if uh, whereabouts are you? Anywhere near Grimsby? Uh, yeah, almost. Br- Brig, Brig is where I'm closer to, but Grim- Grimsby's uh, not too well, far away. You've got the Brig Heritage Centre, which is gorgeous there. And they've, they've, when they're open uh, properly again, they've always got something for kids on in holidays. Um, so I can recommend, if you don't mind going the trip up, the Grimsby Fishing Heritage Centre is phenomenal. Ah, we went there as kids for a school trip. <laughs> yeah. Why haven't you been back since? I don't know, actually. Uh, <laughs> I've got some good memories from there. I've not been there since I was about eight. <laughs> You know, taking the kids, they do everything for, um, I know that on special event days, they do things from net making, um, they do demos. Um, it's just, I, I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, and then if you want to go to the world's way, um, Cadwell Park. Oh, so, which people that. don't offer, yeah, people don't think it's heritage, and of course it's heritage. You know, it's got a strong driving heritage, um, and they've got their trail as well. They've got the Cadwell uh, Vale Trail, um, which is a good one for to have a walk around and sort of have a look at the heritage. So there, there are far too many sites. I've not even started on Lincoln because let's be honest, sort of Lincoln gets a lot of attention for what's there. So you know what's in Lincoln. Um, but yeah, get out and explore, <laughs> please, please do. So Charlotte, you've you've said something there about um, Cadwell and heritage. Um, I might sound uh, really 
Um, <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might sound really naive, but what actually makes something heritage? So that use of the word heritage, mm. what actually genuinely mm-hmm. makes something heritage? Because I was interested when you said Cadwell then, because I would never consider Cadwell Park to be heritage. So I'm quite yeah. interested. Um, People can interpret heritage in different ways. A lot of people think the basic definition is, oh, it has to be something from history or prehistory. So whereas actually I I kind of think, um, and I'm, I'm a firm believer, and we at Heritage Lincoln should believe that it's anything which you feel contributes towards your cultural identity, which is a really yeah. fancy way of saying, if it's something you are proud of, it is part of your heritage. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, if it's... If it's got something, Cadwell Park is known worldwide. It's a worldwide yeah. known um, track. So and they've been doing it for a very long time. Um, so, sorry, I'm literally just, of all the timing in the world, I've just, uh, the window cleaner has arrived. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> If it's a problem, let wants, me know. Yeah. Ask him if he wants to come on the podcast. Just, just <laughs> give him a wave, open the window and be like, come on, pal, do you want to come in there and have a little chat? It's a good presentation of the sign of the times, to be honest, because we are all working from home and have done for a while. In usual terms, we might have met up and done this in all in the same room. But, you know, this is yeah. it's the sign of the times. We, you know, Hannah's got a dog that could chew in a bone at any moment in time and throwing us all off cards. <laughs> My dogs, kids, children, husband could be in and out at any given point. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> your dog's child, your dog's child's husband. Wow. That was, that was that an extra really three rather than one person. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is very specific. Dad could have a delivery at any moment in time. Let's be honest. You could what? What are you ordering from Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always, to be fair, I accident. This is really random, but I accidentally ordered. I, well, I ordered a garlic. Accidentally, crusher. <laughs> no, no, no. I ordered a garlic crusher the other day, and um, I, and they sent two because I was. I finally got too tired of just cutting garlic up. Like I moved house last year, and I was like, I'm not going to buy a garlic crusher. I'll just cut it up with a little knife. But I got tired of it. Um, so I thought, right, I'll, buy, I'll buy a garlic crusher, and, and then and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel really sympathetic towards me, please. It's been horrible, um, and uh, and um, and yeah, and I accidentally. I that it was potentially something really sophisticated that I got myself a, a garlic crusher. Well, actually, I'm just too lazy to cut up garlic. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I ordered I ordered that, but I accidentally ordered two. So so yesterday evening, um, I know my my next door neighbour. He actually works uh, at the football club as well, and uh, so I uh, messaged him and said, "Oh, mate, like." I've got something for you. you um, he, he, no, no, he, he thought he thought he thought it was a bit of an emergency, so he was like, he was like, is everything all right? But I I put my phone away and I was watching um, the United game last night, and then uh, I was like, oh, I messaged him a couple of hours later. Like, no, 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 it's not an emergency. Don't worry. Um, are you free now? And he's like, yeah. So I went and um, yeah, and I said, <laughs> I was like, it's not an emergency, but. I've got a spare garlic crusher if you want one. And, 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 he just <laughs> and he just started. No, 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 this was in person. This was, this was like, and I just, and I just said, do what? a conversation to have with someone. Hello, mate, and, how are you doing? Do you want a garlic crusher? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did just sort of say there's no way of getting around how weird this is. I've, I've got, a, I've got a spare garlic crusher, and and do you want it? And he was like, to be fair, he's he's a lovely guy, and he just went, yeah. And I was like, wow, that was that was enthusiastic. Almost like his day had been missing the garlic crusher. And you've missed a trick there because you could have palmed that off as a gift for someone in the future. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm good at that. I am good at that. Repurposing gifts. Um, I've got no shame in admitting that. No, like chocolate. Like people buy me chocolate, and I'm not mad keen on it. So I just go, I'll give that some. I don't wrap it up. I'm not that shameful, but I will just give it to oh, somebody I would. else. I'd wrap it up. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> I've got two kids, all their all their friends of birthdays and Christmases all the time, and they're all having Harry's at an age when he's five where they all invite every, the whole rest of the cast c- class, class to their parties. <laughs> so I'm having to buy presents, well, not this year because obviously COVID stopped all parties, but usually I'm having to buy like. Oh, COVID! Um, <laughs> one of the positive sides of it. I'm having to buy. Um, 
cards, presents, and everything like that, like two, three a month sometimes, because it's, it's just it's, it's out of hand. Mm-hmm. So actually, you know, repurposing gifts is really important <laughs> for parents anyway. And then there'll be lots out there that are like, absolutely, no shame, rewrap them, deliver them back. Yeah. I'm going to stockpile loads when I become a parent. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have loads. I'm going to have a cupboard full of gifts that I was given a long time ago that I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is going this is going to you the garlic crusher for you little jimmy at five years old you're having a garlic crusher <laughs> five-year-old kid's gonna open this garlic crusher and be like what yeah but imagine it it's like for kids that age he'll probably think it's the best play-doh toy he's ever had true <laughs> oh, that actually Charlotte, it's weird that you said that because i was i was playing with it thinking what does this remind me of and that's what it reminds me of <laughs> anyway we digress massively there yeah. um i'll ask you've, I'll not, ask you've a not done the good, the um, good segue back in <laughs> and gallic no i haven't oh, oh, yeah. oh. anyway <laughs> yes oh one thing that the yellow bellies are famous for is their love of garlic so <laughs> charlotte what um on the subject of uh, heritage, would would food be considered a heritage, and would the Lincolnshire sausage be considered a heritage? That was a great segue. I mean, it's not now that I've said that, but it was a great segue. Sorry, thanks. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> self. <laughs> Um, of course, you know, food is always heritage. And um, I think actually it's probably one of the easiest ways to access heritage. Um, we take it for granted, don't we, that now anywhere in the UK, you could go into a supermarket and buy a Lincolnshire sausage. So, but it's looking at things like um, how traditional that particular food is. So obviously a traditional spice blend um it has to be called a Lincolnshire sausage because that's the sausage blend. Um, you've got things like the Lincolnshire poacher cheese, um, you know, which people know. And it gives you that cultural identity which goes further. So I think the Lincolnshire poacher is one of those ones um, which travels across the world, doesn't it? Um, I'm pretty sure I saw a post recently that somebody had bought some Lincolnshire poacher cheese for it was 250 gram of Lincolnshire poacher for about 12 quid in Japan. So, um, that, you know, that's, wow. it, it gets that far on. Yeah. So I know, um, I was reading it and, um, I just thought it was, it was fascinating, but people pay for it because it's, it's got that heritage, you know, it's uh, got their reputation. So that's the thing. Yes. So in a short answer to your question, yes. I mean, it's good cheese. And it, it, it's good. It is good, yeah. i tell you what I did forget on food, but you can add it. So this one um, this one is as well for any sort of vegetarians listening, the um, Lincolnshire Plum Loaf. <laughs> Traditionally, yes. very good with cheese. <gasps> I love it. Yeah. I do love a Lincolnshire Plum Loaf. It is delicious. Lincolnshire Plum Loaf. Yeah, that sounds great. Have you not had a Lincolnshire Plum Loaf, Danny? You've what? lived here forever. Yeah, I know. What's I, wrong well, with you? <laughs> I, 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 all right, jeez. Right. <laughs> Suddenly it's attacked Danny. Like, I've, 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 I'll be honest with you, I've never looked at a plum loaf and gone, oh, I want a plum loaf in my life. Like, But maybe... Oh, you will do when you've had No, no, yeah, yeah. Not maybe, maybe. I, I do love, um, you know, when you get your meal deals, I do love having a, a little, um, what was it called? Fruit bread? No, saurine. Saurine, whatever it's called. Oh, saurine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Malt loaf. Yeah, malt loaf, that's yeah. it. Yeah, I love a malt loaf. I love a malt loaf. So, yeah, it's not too dissimilar, actually. I mean, um, there we go. Just I'm just basic, I am. I'm just basic. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm your, I'm, your, I'm your Tesco value plum loaf, and mine's a sorry malt loaf. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, you know, you guys saying that, I mean, doesn't that... You, uh, we were talking about food as a cultural identity, um, but hasn't that just proved the point? So we, we just attacked Danny over, over plum loaf. <laughs> 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 because we feel that, that strongly true. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm a, quite an arts person. I, I would probably say arts and heritage do go very well together in terms of that. Is there, is there any um, particular uh, either sites of interest or places that people should go in terms of arts heritage? Oh, that's a tricky one because, um, yes, all over the place. Um, so art is not as much my forte. I'm, I'm more into heritage, but you can find art everywhere. It depends on... Um, what you're looking for. If you're looking for traditional art, I always like the collection. I used to, um, before the controversial changes, uh, the Usher Gallery used to be brilliant in um, in Lincoln. Um, but I quite appre- I, I really appreciate the art you find in our churches because Lincolnshire is known for having absolutely beautiful churches. Um, 
you know, you, you, oh, it does, yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you get them um, some fantastic sites all over that have got this wonderful architecture on the inside. Um, one of my favourites is I, I really do like stained glass, which I know is a non-traditional form of art. It's more sort of on the heritage side, but you know, stained glass glass is beautiful. Um, and I suppose if if you're asking me, sort of. Uh, my favourite sort of art, art, art within Lincolnshire, I would say I think we have some phenomenal stained glass. And my favourite probably has to be the stained glass in the church in Curtin. can't remember what the church's name is. I feel awful now, but there is only one in Curtin, um, which is Curtin's just outside of Boston. Um, <laughs> if, if you have a, a, if you would like a fun fact, um, Curtin has a wonderful um, array. Always. Of, yeah. <laughs> a wonderful array of stained glass, um, one of which actually is, I think, the only stained glass in the entirety of the United Kingdom that has a Great War soldier in it. So um, so most stained glass, obviously, we assume oh. it's seen very old fashioned. Um, but if you if you pop into Curtin, you can see just just there in the background is a soldier from the Great War, um, and that's because the, the 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 glass and a lot of the repairs to the the church after the war were paid for by a local family whose son um, went off to war and unfortunately didn't come back. Um, so as part of that, they replaced yeah. the stained glass that had been blown out and um, asked if they could have their son in there just in the background. So um, so yeah, so and it's it's beautiful stained glass. Honestly, it's really lovely. And if you catch the light right, um, it lights up um, the church in a way you can get some beautiful photography from it. So yeah, so sorry, it's not traditional yeah, that's art. A, that's another little <laughs> hidden gem for people to find. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, absolutely. What I was after though, beautiful story. Um, I think actually in terms of that, and I know you mentioned obviously at Bolingbroke, there's a, there was a king that had been born there. Um, I did a. Um, uh, you know, you know when quizzes were a thing in lockdown and everyone was doing them. I I I, uh, I did a, a round actually um, for for my friends uh, all from Lincolnshire that was about um, famous people in Lincoln Lincolnshire that you didn't know about. And actually, there's loads, isn't there? Like, obviously, there was the, the there was the king that was born then, but there's um, we've got loads of um, connections to kings and 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 MPs and things like that. But what what would you say is our like you know our, our top I guess famous people into history wise that we've got links Ooh, with it's it's a tricky one i think we're always going to be in terms of worldwide knowledge i think probably isaac newton is mm. going to be the one um which i know is a bit cliche because everyone says isaac newton but there is a reason for that you know so he um sort of created the theory behind gravity and has, has been the uh, the forefather of sort of everything from um simple sort of gravitational mass to space travel so um a you know bit of and space always... travel was space <laughs> yeah. <on> the <laughs> um, so you, you you've also got people um lover or hater and i know that the uh it, it's a bit, no, bit i know who this one is but, I know, <laughs> <this one> is. <laughs> uh, we've got Margaret Thatcher, so, um, who obviously born in Grantham. Um, te- I think she was a grocer's daughter, wasn't she? So, um, and then you've got um, oh, my mind's been completely back. blank, but I know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> so you, you do have um, Jim Broadbent. You also have Joanna Lumley, but the person I'm thinking <gasps> about is a very famous um, architect and garden designer, and I've completely forgotten his name, which is really embarrassing. So, but he's, I'll remember it. I'd love it. to help you out, we'll but I don't know who you're on about. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's incredibly Lumbry. famous. Yes, so she's from up north in the county. Uh, I've I'm, I've got a bit of an omission here. Joanna Lumley is easily old enough to be my nan, but... Where are you going with this? Oh, something, no, 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 but there's something, I've always said this, there's something really strangely, I'm not even strangely, like, really attractive about Joanna Lumley. Like, I was saying this to someone in my family the other day, and they were looking at me like, she's like 75, mate. And I was like, yeah, but intelligent, <laughs> yeah, but funny, she never listens to it, she's not 75. <laughs> and and well, she's, she has, she's looked after herself, and she she is a, yeah, I, I'd go with that. She is quite an attractive lady, like, she... Well, she's a lady, isn't she? Like, she is a very attractive lady. She's a lady, but she looks like she also isn't, like, too prim and proper and um, doesn't take herself too seriously all of the time and is able to have a laugh and a joke and, yeah. and, and, and make fun of herself and stuff. And I don't know why it sounds like I'm campaigning for Joanna Lumley to be, like, some sort of... <laughs> 
don't know. She's a national treasure, isn't she? She's a Lincolnshire treasure. People, my, my work will be, um, if they listen back to this, they'll say, I can't believe you couldn't remember that. But I have remembered, or slash sneakily Google searched who I, who, who I was there, I couldn't remember. <laughs> um, so it, Joseph Banks. So I can't believe I forgot his name. But yeah, he's very famous botanist, did a lot of very famous um garden landscaping sort of did um all over the country like worked for for the king kings and queens so um yes and he he's a lincolnshire man as well so there are loads there are loads of them and i'm going to stop before i dig myself into a deeper hole <laughs> <laughs> quite literally yeah, well I'm about about the landscaping. <laughs> yes. i would uh, i would recommend anyone listening to actually google some sort of famous lincolnshire names because there's more than you think i was really surprised when i did it and uh, no one got any points in that quiz that i did either because actually no one knew about um as it was no one knew about king henry the fourth like it's just not very well known facts for people that lived in lincolnshire always like um to, to know that so i think yeah it's definitely something that more people should know about we we do we do we have raised some treasures <laughs> Well, we always ask our guests one final question before before we finish with them, and uh, it's it gives us an interesting insight, I think, into into the kind of person they are and what they're interested in. Um, so, if you were to have a dinner party um, and you could invite anyone you like, alive or dead, which three guests would you bring, and why? Oh no, I'm glad. So you did give me a heads up for this this morning, I did. <laughs> um, and I've been thinking. I've been thinking about it for ages, um, trying to come up with who I think would be a good dinner party guest. So I, I've got I've got my list of three. So, but I'm open to suggestions. So my first one is probably <laughs> Dame Judy Dench. So yes! I think she's brilliant. So yeah. she's she's so funny. She's so clever, and her wit is sharp as anything. You know, if you ever mm-hmm. see her at any sort of awards and things, and she's a brilliant actress. You know, yeah. so she just she's I, I I loved her in as time goes by, and I've loved her in films, and you know she's she's just wonderful. So and I think she'd be great fun. You know, I, I don't think you could have a boy. I think she'd probably have so many funny anecdotes um, that she'd keep the rest of the party going easily. Um, my second one to accompany that is uh, Miriam Margulies. So um, <laughs> yeah, she's so, fierce, she, fierce. She is. So she, she I, I respect her for how confident she is and how mm. t- sometimes she, she admits, she freely admits that she's um, completely inappropriate, um, but <laughs> she's My hilarious. Lady. So, yeah, so, and she, she does a huge amount of um, activism work as well. So, um, and I, I identify quite a lot with, she stands very strongly against things like um, fascism and uh, xenophobia and racism. And I just think she's, she is a very loud and proud and sort of respectable woman in a completely unrespectable way. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, lastly is maybe a bit of a cliche, so I apologise if it is, but um, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to, because you said I could have them from the past, and it'd be really nice to have uh, Vincent van Gogh, um, which is, is a bit of a sad one, because I love his art, but I always think, um, you know, I've read an awful lot about his, his story, and it's such a sad story. Um, and I think I would have him at the dinner party just to tell him how popular he is today. Because he had a, a, a tragic, tragic life. You know, he was never appreciated in his time. Um, he 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 went to his grave thinking that nobody would ever like his his paintings. And then now he's probably one of, if not the most popular artist um, in the world in history. So um, I ju- I just think that it'd be nice to put that right and to have a, a man who thinks that he'd you know achieved nothing in his life and thinks that he nobody you know loved him and loved his work and to actually put that right and say actually look this is this is who you are now um, everyone knows your name then mm. <laughs> Dench would be great wouldn't she Dench is another Joanna Lumley by the way yeah <laughs> Is your problem <laughs> yes I think I think there's a, I think there's a triumvirate of uh, Helen Mirren Dame Judi Dench and oh, was it Dame Helen Mirren is she a dame as well she, I think she's yeah. a dame, isn't she? And uh, and is, is Joanna is Joanna Lumley a dame? I just she should yeah. be. She should be. I'm going to start that petition as soon as this podcast ends. 
<laughs> so Charlotte, we don't let our guests go without giving them the chance to promote something. And I'm sure you've got an awful lot going on at Heritage Lincolnshire. So what would you like to tell our listeners about? Oh, we do indeed. So there's a load of stuff going on, but the big thing I'm promoting at the minute is um, our Lincolnshire Explorer Trails. So you asked earlier about things you could do with the kids. So um, we have been developing a project uh, which originally was meant to be in person and we were doing sort of guided um, tours, walks of um, local areas to try and get people in touch with their local heritage. Um, however, COVID happened. So, um, you know, walking tours with, with sort of guides, not so much a, a good thing anymore. Um, so we've made them self-led. So the first one launched at the beginning of the year and it focuses on Sleaford. Um, it explores some of the really cool places in Sleaford, including some of the, the hidden gems. So it takes you on a walking tour, which takes up about half a day. So and you can make it a bit longer if you want to, because we, we factored in a picnic stop at the castle. Yes. Um, and yeah, yeah, so at the moment we are it, we're raising money for um, for charity with, for for the charity with it. So they're seven ninety nine, but they're fully. Um, we we reckon it's about half day to a full day's experience. Um, you can take it round. It's great for lockdown because you can go around with your bubble. Um, you don't have to sort of interact with things. You just print it off or put it on your phone, um, and basically just follow um, the guide around the town. So and we're super proud of it. it this one has been designed for families. So this one is great, though we say any age can do it, but this one has been designed to be to appealing to kids um, as well as adults, whereas the next one we're working on is the Witham Valley Abbey Trail, so where we are currently researching that. That will be a bit more of an um, adult trail, um, taking you around some of the, the must-see sites in that Witham Valley area um, and sort of looking at some of the stories as well, including some of the sort of darker or slightly ruder stories associated with the abbeys so you know we're talking counterfeiting money we're talking um uh, some of some of the um the priests being kept in um so having a, a curfew so they don't go and uh, father any more children in the local villages so that Whoa. sort of stuff we're talking fisticuffs so, <laughs> so, so f- fans of bridget in Make sure you follow that one up. Yeah, I'm, I've noted it down, Danny. <laughs> it, it is now, Lizzie's been making it bold. She's been like, must go. I reckon that's one that we need to do together, guys. Yes, <laughs> yes. Definitely. The talk, yeah, to be fair, we must make sure that we reference Charlotte back in that and she'll be like, no, thanks to Charlotte from Heritage Lincolnshire for telling us about the dodgy monks. <laughs> um, <laughs> And Charlotte would be like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what it was. No, to, to, to be fair, it, it definitely was what it was. So. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to market her project. She I was about to say, she, she's, yeah, the unique selling point. Uh, how can I relate this to Bridget in the most popular series on Netflix? Just talk about the promiscuous monks. Like, that's what we do. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, Charlotte. It's been fantastic to talk all about uh, Lincolnshire and uh, the heritage. And I think a lot of people will be listening to it, thinking about, um, well, planning their summer, basically. I hope but now we're hopefully we'll be able to go out and, and check out a few places. I hope we've given them some really good ideas of where to get. So thank you very much. That was fantastic to hear from Charlotte. Some really interesting things and some fantastic things to look forward to. Um, Charlotte did also let us know um, after the recording that um, it isn't actually Joanna Lumley. So, Danny, how do you feel about this? It's not actually Joanna Lumley. It's Jennifer Saunders. He's still on board with that. Um, so, who's from Lincoln G? Yeah, do you like her yeah. as much? Yeah. Wow. Okay. You don't want uh, Joanna Lumley anymore because she's not from Lincolnshire. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I still want Joanna Lumley. I'm just not not bothered about uh, Jennifer Saunders. She's hilarious. She's really funny, but she, she doesn't quite hit the spotlight. Hey, Joanna she's not does. listening to this. I know. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Brutal much. Um, and on that note, let's move on. We're going to uh... <laughs> Jennifer Saunders. <laughs> no, she is hilarious. She's really funny. She is really funny. Um, I think but, she's amazing. <laughs> if you yeah. listen to this, Joanna Saunders, you're fantastic. Joanna Saunders, who's the ex Joanna Saunders? Jennifer Saunders, you are amazing. Don't let anyone tell you any different. That's the time. Okay. Of the
<laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so let's move on then, um, and let's have a chat to Charles, who is our sort of resident aviation expert. Our guest this week is Charles, who is a member of the Aviation Heritage Lincolnshire Committee. Um, He delivers a range of talks, um, all to do with his interest in aviation, and he does that for Heritage Lincolnshire. So welcome, Charles. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. No worries. Right. So uh, I suppose the first thing that we we need to talk to you about, really, is... um, What really sort of first piqued your interest in aviation? Well, my father was in the Royal Air Force in the Second World War. And in the 1950s, we used to go to the Battle of Britain days at RAF Bimbrook and RAF Hemswell and uh, the other local air displays. And uh, at that time, it it was... um, Quite, quite interesting, you know, for me as, as a young boy. Um, uh, love, love seeing all the aircraft flying, you know, the chance to get in the cockpits and that sort of thing. Uh, so that, that really got me started. And in 1956, which some of your older listeners will remember, um, Britain took the world airspeed record. Um, Peter Twist flying a ferry Delta II uh, jet, he took the world airspeed record, 1,100 miles an hour. And that was splashed across the pages of, of all the newspapers. And it, it was a big thing. Uh, Britain at that time was in the forefront of aviation development and we got a very healthy aviation industry uh, so um, you know it it was all very interesting for a, a young boy fantastic i think that's brilliant when you talk about almost having those like role models uh, and those events that really do pique your interest that's something that we sort of try and <laughs> try and get across to to our students that you you've got all these me myself and danny teach um sport at sort of level three which is a level and um we always try and get across that you know all these athletes have started somewhere and having these athletes as role models is a fantastic thing and i suppose it's the same for you in terms of aviation yeah, yes, that, that's quite correct. In in those days, um, the the test pilots were the stars. It's a bit like the personalities that we have on the television today. Um, in those days, uh, the test pilots were, were household names. Uh, so, has any of them inspired you to uh, perhaps jump in the cockpit yourself and fly a plane? Has that ever been something you've wanted to do? Uh, I, I've, I've, I've done a bit of flying. I've, I've not done a lot. Uh, I used to be a member of the gliding club at Curtin in Lindsay, and uh, I've done a bit of powered flying with friends. And I've also had quite a, a few air experience flights, courtesy of the Royal Air Force. So I, I've done quite a bit, but uh, I've never really had the time. I was, I was going to ask, you mentioned Curtin upon Lindsay uh, yeah. earlier on. Obviously, um, I assume that you live in you live in Lincolnshire yourself. Is that right? I, I live about three miles outside Lincoln. Yes, I've lived in Lincolnshire all my life. So, what's your so what's your favourite place to visit in Lincolnshire? It doesn't have to be linked to aviation, although I imagine it it might well be. Um, I, I quite like going to the Battle of Britain Memorial fight at Coningsby. And if if you go down to Coningsby, you can actually kill two birds with one stone because you can have a tour of the Battle of Britain flight, uh, which is very interesting. Um, You get shown around the hangar by experienced guides who explain all the different aircraft that that are in the hangar. Um, And then... Uh, once you've finished your tour, you know, had a sit in the visitor centre, had a cup of tea and a bit of cake, uh, you can then go and sit outside and you are, you can watch the typhoons flying. So so it, it's a really nice place to go for a morning or an afternoon. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like a really kind of varied um, experience when you go along to something like that. You get a little bit of a taste for multiple different eras, I guess, of aviation. 
Would yeah, yes, right? yeah, that, that's that's quite correct because the the Battle of Britain Memorial fight. Um, well, everybody knows Lancaster, of course. Yeah. Well, you've um, you've told us about uh, Coningsby, which I think is that's uh, you've probably piqued the interest of some of our listeners there. But is there um, is there anywhere else in Lincolnshire that you would recommend someone visit, especially if they're interested in aviation, like you? Uh, yes, uh, one of the, one of the lesser known sites is the uh, museum at RAF Digby. Uh, this is the 12 group sector museum. There's no aircraft there, uh, apart from a plastic one on the gate. But this is, <laughs> this is the uh, uh, fighter control centre for Lincolnshire in the Second World War. So, so oh. you can go along on a Sunday morning uh, when not, <laughs> when we get back to normality. You can anyway. <laughs> you you can go along on a Sunday morning, <clears throat> and again, an experienced guide will take you on a tour round the old RAF sector operations room. Now, this was built in about 1938, and as I say it was responsible for controlling all of the fighter aircraft in this part of eastern England from about 1939 right through to the end of the Second World War. So it's an absolutely fascinating place, and it's been rebuilt so that it looks almost exactly like it would have done in 1940. Fantastic. Well, before we let you go, Charles, we usually give our guests the chance to promote anything that they want to. So I don't know if you wanted to promote the talks that you do. Um, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for that opportunity. Uh, first of all, yes, the, the talks are uh, being organised by uh, Lincolnshire Heritage. Um, in March, I'm giving a talk on the history of Humberside Airport. And finally, in April, I'm going to give a talk on the history of RAF Fiskerton near Lincoln. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Charles. Thank it's been you. an absolute pleasure. It's given us an opportunity to uh, to actually to take a different turn for the podcast as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's nice. That it's not, it was nice to hear so many different like locations that I'm like, oh, yeah. I know that. That whole beach, Fiskerton, Digby, Coningsby, like I've been to all of these different places and it's like, oh. So, yeah. so thank you to both Charles and Charlotte who are a part of Heritage Lincolnshire. Uh, they both sign posters us towards some really interesting things to do, hopefully uh, at some point in this calendar year. In particular, the uh, the walk that, that Charlotte mentioned in the, in the podcast, that I think the three of us are, are certainly very interested in, in completing um, and fascinating to hear so much about our county of Lincolnshire on the Lincolnshire Buzzcast.